Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, we are going to be doing a February favorites where I pick out my favorite makeup products for the month of February and I share them with you guys and hopefully convince you to pick them up because they're fantastic. So if you want to see the products that I've been loving, then just keep watching. So there were a lot of great makeup products that released this month. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I wasn't super busy and occupied with work this month. It was a pretty chill month work-wise, so I was able to film a lot of reviews, try out a lot of different makeup, and as a result, I had a lot of different makeup that I had to choose from for this month. There was a lot more than this that I loved, but I really had to narrow it down to what I love, love, love. Not every month am I going to be able to try and use so much makeup, so I definitely took full advantage and filmed as much as I could and tried out as much as I could. We're going to start off with the complexion products. I'm sure you guys can probably guess because I love this. I tried it out and that was it. I knew it was going to be a favorite. This is the Pat McGrath new concealer that just came out. It's so funny because her foundation was so controversial. People were expecting it to be so much better than it actually was. I I personally really liked her foundation, but I can see some people finding it to be underwhelming. This concealer, as far as I can tell, everybody is loving it. It is a pretty full coverage concealer, which is really interesting because the foundation that it pairs with is quite natural, but it kind of balances, I guess. I just wasn't expecting it to have so much coverage, but this is a beautiful, beautiful product. I have mine in LM9. It spreads out so easily. It really covers the under eyes very well, and it looks extremely natural. It doesn't kick up, and longevity is awesome with this. I would recommend also picking up the Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder that comes with it. It comes in three shades. I just bought the light. These two are a power duo. I think that this really complements the concealer and makes it work and look so much better. I'm not one to always set my under eyes, but I do find that when I use this on top of this concealer, they work so well together. This really blurs the under eyes and it also makes the concealer last longer. A lot of times you'll find with complexion products that come out, when it comes out with a matching powder, you don't really need the matching powder. I find that these really complement each other and I would recommend buying both. So I've been loving these two products. They really make my under eyes look super bright and awake and very smooth and it lasts a long time. So she killed it with this formula. Absolutely amazing. And I know a lot of other people who agree with me as well. All right, let's move on to cheek products or face products. So the first product that I want to talk about is from Alamar Cosmetics, and this is the Brighten and Bronze Complexion Trio. They came out with three different shades. I just bought the Fair Light. They also have like a medium one and then a deep one. Obviously, I am quite fair, so I thought this would be a really great color. And truly, I love this mostly for the first two colors to contour my nose. The bronzer is very nice. It is what I use to bronze my face, and I really do like this bronzer. It does spread beautifully. Beautifully and it's a very nice color, but what really makes this palette stand out is this shade right here, Pale Wear. If you have a light complexion like myself and you're horrible at nose contouring like me, this makes it pretty foolproof. This is like the perfect color to put right down the sides of your nose and then you use your finger with a little bit of rise and grind right in the center and it really contours your nose. So this is my answer to nose contouring if you are not good at nose contouring. These are the perfect color if you have a light complexion and then you can add a little bit more intensity with this. This light shade is also really good for a very natural bronze to the outside of the skin or if you are extremely fair but the way I like to use it is this as a bronzer, this to contour my nose and this to kind of get in the center of my nose. I don't really like this powder to put on my under eyes because it does have this sheen to it that I find kind of reflects and emphasizes the texture underneath my eyes so I don't really like how this looks on my under eyes but but I'll use it to brighten like certain areas of my face, like the center or underneath the bronze. So I've been loving this trio. I think she did a fabulous job and the formulas are awesome and the colors she chose specifically, so good. So been loving this, somebody asked me. And I'll talk about the brush that I used to apply the bronzer that you saw. This, this month, has been my go-to bronzer brush. This is from Refer. It looks like a Tom Ford brush, and this is the number 22 brush. You can purchase this on their website right now, or I believe if you buy this set, you get this brush for free because it is kind of pricey individually. But this is the perfect bronzer brush. I just, it's so soft. 
and it really hits all the right areas. Tom Ford no longer sells a natural hair brush with this shape because the Tom Ford brush, I believe, is what this is probably modeled after. This is natural hair. If you were unable to get your hands on the natural hair Tom Ford bronzer brush, purchase this. It's amazing and I've been using this every day for my bronzer. I don't want to cover this too much because I've talked about this product a lot on my channel, but this is the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. Now, in my last video where I talked about new products at Sephora, I pretty much said everything that I need to say about this palette, but just in case you missed it, not every product in here do I absolutely love. What I love the most is the Glow Cream Base. This makes the most beautiful cream blush. It's not too too deeply pigmented. It just has that right amount of color just to give you a little bit of a youthful glow and plump to your cheek. Right on the apples is so beautiful and I'm also very much in love with the Glow Impact Powder. It's just a really good solid highlighter formula that doesn't emphasize texture and really gives you a nice glow and blends into the skin. What I'm not as crazy about but I do still enjoy is this Super Glow right here. So I'll put this right on top of the Glow Cream Base just to add a little bit of color or if I want a really shiny cheek. If you don't like a shiny cheek, you may not like this. I have to use this color very sparingly. This is really pretty and I do like it. I just don't use it every time. What I don't use is the Diamond Powder. This is like pure glitter, honestly. It doesn't look good on the face on for myself personally. I just don't like that look, but I do think it is very pretty all over the eyelid, but I definitely would have replaced this with something else. So I love these two products in particular, so I find myself grabbing for this product a lot because of those two, but I do use this one a lot. This one wasted space, but overall, Collectively, I've been grabbing for this palette a lot. It's been getting a lot of use this month. So I wanted to feature it in this video because I have been using it a lot and loving it. I have a couple of blush items to talk about. So the first one I'm going to talk about is from the drugstore. This is the Alme Healthy Hue Blush in the shade Nearly Nude. I picked this up on a whim from Walmart. And mind you, the packaging is like horrible. It's just this very cheap cardboard. But the formula of this blush... This has the most healthy sheen to it. So if you like a matte blush, just be aware that this has a sheen. This is such a universal color. I think so many of you are going to love the formula on this. I can tell a good blush formula by when I use a powder foundation, this still applies on the cheek. Just because a lot of times you'll find with blushes, they need something to grab onto like that foundation. But if you use a powder foundation, there's nothing for the blush to really grab onto. So I can really detect a good blush formula if it shows up on my powder foundation that I wear every day for work and this does it. It's such a beautiful everyday color. I've been wearing it pretty much every day to work and it's Olme. Olme as a brand doesn't really stand out to me sometimes but this blush is really good. This formula is really good. They really hit this formulation right when it comes to the finish because it is such a healthy glowy kind of blush where there is that sheen and I think that sheen also helps it blend out onto the cheek super easy. I don't know, like they call it healthy hue for a reason. It literally makes you look healthy. So if you want to try a new blush formula from the drugstore that's really good, definitely give this one a go. Olme could probably use some love. So next up is the blush that I'm wearing. I did wear it in my previous video as well, but I can't get enough of it. This is the Dior Backstage Blush in Rosy Glow. I love a good pink blush. This is more of a matte finish. And I mean, you know what? You could probably say this is pretty nondescript. It's not a really unique original blush, but it is such a good blush. I love how tiny it is. I love grabbing for it because it's so cute. It's so pink. I love a good pink blush. It has a buildable formula, so you can get it pretty sheer on the cheek, but you can also build it up. It's more of a matte finish, but I think it really just gives this really healthy look to the face and just a little bit of a pop. I just am really enjoying it. And also another reason why I wanted to put it in here was because I had to show you its best friend, and that is the Dior Luminizer in Rosy Vibes. So this is from their new spring collection. Look how stunning this highlighter is. Now this is a very sheer pink highlighter, but it's not too, too pink. You know how sometimes there's those pink highlighters that just aren't that wearable? Like you think they will be, and then you put them on and you're like, oh, that's kind of pink. Like this is a pink highlighter that is legitimately wearable, especially when you pair it with this pink blush. These two are a match made in heaven. I have both of these on right now. And something about these two just blend so seamlessly into each other. Like I said, I was scared because this is kind of a pink highlighter, but I find that this is actually quite wearable for everyday. 
day and I love that little pink tint that kind of mixes in with your blush so even though it you can be intimidated because it is pink it actually is quite wearable the formula is stunning but I would definitely recommend if you're gonna pick this up also pick up the blush because the two of them together <sighs> fantastic I've been wearing these two together and only these two together for a very long time now not really but for like three weeks and yes so good all right i have two eyeshadow palettes to share with you a lot of great eyeshadows came out this month but <laughs> i really had to narrow it down to the ones that i've truly been loving and both of these you've heard quite a lot about recently but i mean i'd be lying if i didn't put them in my favorites so the first is the viseart paris edit i feel like i've been talking about this for such a long time but it it, it literally came out this month i don't want to talk about it too much because i already have but it's just really tiny such a pretty color story from viseart and these are my kinds of tones. I love cool tone, mauve rosy types of shades. So this has been one of my go-tos. And I find the formula in here to be particularly good as well. And it's just so cute. I don't have a ton of palettes that are like this type of tones and I love it. I used it for today. I did a very soft look using these colors and I like that you can really build this formula up to get quite a smoky, not so natural look, but you can also get a really pretty everyday look with this. And the look that I'm wearing right now, like it's still not super, super cool tone. So don't be afraid if you think cool tones don't look good on you because as you can see, yeah, it does run a little bit more cool, but you don't literally get purple mauve looks with this palette. You can kind of go a little bit outside of that range so been loving this just such everyday friendly colors for me it's such an easy palette to grab so highly recommend this and the last eyeshadow palette that I have oh, I'm preparing for the hate but I feel so inspired by the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Bloodless palette I normally like his palettes but I feel like I've really been raving about this more so than I have all of his other palettes. And yeah, it does have to do with the fact that it's purple and purple is my favorite eyeshadow color. Now, this isn't a palette that I've used a ton and I've worn out in public a ton. Actually, I don't think I've ever wore a look out in public with this palette. But I just feel so inspired by this palette. There's so many different looks that I want to create. Purples bring me alive. So for me personally, like I see so much potential that I can create with this palette because I love purple and I love purple looks. Now this palette does not come without flaws. I really hate the shape of this palette. It does not fit in my makeup drawer well at all. It's just so clunky and uh. There's a couple shadows in here that burn my eyelids. Now the burning does go away and yes I have confirmed it is the eyeshadows that burn my eyes which sounds very not good and intimidating but honestly like the burning goes away and my eyes aren't that sensitive so whatever I can still see but just the overall fact that this inspires me so much and for the most part I do like the quality is what has led me to put that in this month's favorite and the last product is a lip product that I've been loving and using so often and this is from Dior <sighs> a lot of Dior products in here Dior did a nice job this year this is the lip glow oil in the shade rosewood and this is what I have on my lips right now nothing else I just raved about the Viseart lip oils now those are a much more slick formula this one is much more thick and sticky there's a time and a place for both but I think if you actually like want to wear the lip oil for an extended period of time this one definitely has a lot longer of a wear time it's a lot more like a gloss but it still does moisturize the lips so much what I like about this particular color is that when it does wear off there still is a bit of a stain to my lips where they still stand out on my face there's just something about it that makes my lips look plump and juicy without adding too much colors so if you're not big on like lips sticks or anything this might be a product that you will really enjoy just to throw on for an everyday quick look to run out the door this a little bit of foundation powder and some mascara is pretty much my uh, go-to look for work every day so I've been loving lip oils and the Dior lip oil formula I see why people are talking about it because it is a beautiful formula I love this color and I just can't get over how shiny and plump and healthy my lips look so that is all i have for this month's favorites there's so many other products that i tried that i truly did love but i had to narrow them down and these are just what i've been grabbing for on a regular basis let me know down below what one of your favorite products were for this month thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys found it helpful if you are not yet subscribed to my channel i sure do hope you take the time to do so and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys have a good one